Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Edit Place. And today we are going to jump back to kind of refresh a video that I did, I don't know, like a year or so ago, uh, where we talked about five settings that you should change in DaVinci Resolve. Maybe you're coming over from Premiere or Final Cut, or you're just new to the program in general. These are around five things that I think you should be aware of and that you're pretty much going to change on almost every project or at least bring up and be aware of. So I have an empty project here, got a bunch of random footage, and we're just going to jump all over the place here. So first, we are going to go to timeline resolution. So by default, pretty much, if you go into your project settings, you will see your timeline resolution up here. Now you can make presets. Uh, so you can change these, you can add new ones if you want. Uh, the same exact resolution to come up by default. However, if you've just downloaded the program, you're going to have this. And since I've re-downloaded it so many different times for different tutorials, that's why pretty much all my presets always disappear. Uh, but you can export these if you want to. Now, another reason to understand timeline resolution is this can help or hurt you dramatically with playback. For example, all this footage that you see off to the side here is 6K uh, footage. So if I were to go the full resolution, it would be 6144 by 3456. And so if I were to grab one of these clips and my computer can play back just fine, but you know, on a lot of computers, this would be quite a struggle. So if you're having issues uh, with playback here, like here, I'll try to hurt it a little bit by throwing just something on it, noise reduction here. So now this is gonna hurt because we are again trying to play back in full resolution. And there's black bars here, so technically I forgot it's DCI 6K it was shot at. Um, so actually I think this footage is, let me take a look at the file. Yeah, 2560 to 2560. All right, now it's the full resolution and you can see that we're struggling a little bit here, playing back around 22 frames per second. But if I were to go into project settings and say changes back to 1080, I still going to get those black bars because I don't know what the HD version of uh, this would be. But now if I play back, we can see that we're playing back with no problems. So that kind of leads into our next thing here, right? Like if you don't want to change your timeline resolution, then your other options for playback are going to be proxy mode. And without generating proxies or anything, you can go in here and go to half resolution quarter, um, and that will help a bit. So if we go back to our full resolution, all right, you can see that we're stumbling again. And so if I go in here, go to half or even quarter, now it's going to play back at quarter resolution, which obviously still looks super good. But now we're playing back at full quality, or I'm sorry, full uh, real-time frame rates. And you can see that we didn't have to waste time generating proxies. Of course, you still have this icon up here at the top right, which will turn off all your effects. So that turns off the noise reduction and the color grade. Gives you good playback as well. But now let's talk about proxies. So back when I made the first video, you had to generate proxies on the media page. That was the only place you could do it. And once you got into editing on the edit page, uh, it kind of wasn't an option anymore. But now... You can go in, select one clip, select all the clips, and when you right-click on it, you can see Generate Proxy Media, and it's automatically going to start doing its thing. Uh, before you do that, you want to make sure that you go back into your project settings, and under here, under Working Folders, you're going to see Proxy Generation Location, so you want to make sure you choose where um, the proxies will actually be saved to, and you want to save this to your fastest drive. So I have a um, SSD um, that I normally go. All my hard drives are SSDs except for my server. Um, but this is where I keep my working footage, uh, kind of this on this NVMe SSD. And then I just have an AngelBird one terabyte where I put all my cache stuff. And so I just made that little folder, hit open. And now we can see the files go there. And then right above it, you also want to check that uh, what type of format you're going in. So proxy media, ProRes is very good, especially on Macs, but ProRes 422HQ is a bit much for proxy media. So I always change this to 422 proxy. Um, and then I leave this on automatic, but if you're still having playback issues, you can choose um, the resolution in order to play back in. 
And if you're doing optimized media, you can adjust that here. But if you're sticking to proxies, only this one and where it's going to are the important uh, settings to change. And so again, now you can select one, many, generate proxy, um, and it will start doing its thing. Also, if you move any of the proxies or you send it to someone, you'll also see the same option for uh, link proxy media. And so all those tips, you should be getting pretty good uh, playback no matter what. So yeah, let's move on to our next one here. And this is going to be image scaling. So let's go back to, let's say our full project was in DCI. So we had, we have this, right? And so now we have these black bars uh, at the top. Now I could go in and let's say you didn't want that, right? You want this to be full. Of course you can go over to your inspector panel and just zoom in and you can do that. Or uh, you can go to retime and scaling under the scaling. You can go to fill and that's going to do the same thing. Or if you're going to be doing that a bunch, basically, so all this footage, if I import it, I'd have to um, either select each one or select a bunch and do the scaling all at once. It doesn't take a terribly amount of time, but in editing, every second counts, and so this tip will definitely uh, make things even faster. Again, when you're going into your project settings, so in theory, before you import footage and anything, and you're setting your timeline resolutions, your proxy format stuff, go under image scaling, and right in the middle, input scaling mismatch resolution files, and you want to change this to scale entire image um, to, instead of fit, you're going to change it to full frame with crop. And so you're going to save that, and you can see that this clip automatically uh, just zoomed in, and if I go to import any other clips, they're automatically uh, filmed in. And you're not actually like cropping or removing anything. Oh, height's the same, but I can still move this left to right and have all those uh, pixels if I want to reframe something. But uh, that can save you a lot of time. It's just setting up that image scaling in the beginning. All right, so now let's talk about bins because uh, we have bins over here that you can organize so you can put you know, anything you want in these, you just right click and start typing and adding new ones in. You know, just get a bunch of different bins in here. Boom. Um, and the nice thing is you can't normally rearrange these by default. You see that red line as I'm moving it around. You can move them into parent folders and things like that, but uh, normally you can't rearrange these. So what you want to do is go up to your master, right click on that and go to sort by at the very bottom. And you can sort by some of these auto generated options or user sort is what I usually set it as. Um, Cause that's what will give you that little red line so you can move them after you've created them. Um, and so that can be super helpful. But then you also have power bins right here. If you have no idea what power bins are is very similar to power grades. And all that means is um, anything in bins up here is specific to this project. So whatever I create here, it's only dealing in this project. However, power bins or power grades, when you create something in here, so if I made something called titles, and if I were to add a title into here, if I then changed project, so if I went into one of my other uh, YouTube video projects here, you would see under Power Bins that titles folder that I just created. And again, the same goes with the color grades. Stills in here are specific to this project, but Power Grades are available across all projects. So I'll jump back to the one I was just working on. Again, we don't see those stills anymore, but we see that same Power Grade. And of course, the same uh, power bin title. So you can move uh, footage into here, uh, custom titles, anything that you really want. So if you have like a logo that you're using uh, constantly or um, just really anything, maybe a clip you com constantly reference, make it a power bin and that way you don't have to constantly waste time uh, re-importing and recreating a new bin 
for it in each project that you're working on. Keep in mind, this only works across a single database. So if I go back to my home here, you can see that I have uh, multiple different databases. So the power bin that I just created here in the edit place uh, uh, database will not sync over uh, in my YouTube database. You can see it went away there. And then the last one I want to talk about, obviously there's hundreds more. So if this video was helpful, definitely give it a like and let me know down in the comments below if you want to see more. Uh, but the last one I want to touch upon is something that I loved in Premiere. And for a long time, I was really sad that uh, DaVinci didn't have the option, but I just didn't know what to click on. And that is to have multiple timeline views open. So right here, this button right here, you can see a lot of stuff's activated by default, but this one uh, is one that I would suggest turning on because that gives you this little window. So if you didn't see it before, you can see right here, there's nothing. Turn it back on. And now we have timeline one. And I like this because a lot of times I'll uh, cut rough footage or dailies uh, on one timeline and then maybe I want to create a new timeline for the final cut. Maybe work on a specific piece over here. And so I just like having multiple timelines. And usually I'll create a bin for timelines um, that I can jump back to. So I can just storm in there. But also having them right up here to jump back and forth between is super helpful. The only downside to this uh, is I can't seem to find a way where even if I save a preset in project settings, this will always turn off by default uh, whenever I reopen uh, Resolve or start a new project. So uh, unfortunately, please, if someone has found a way to keep this on by default, that let me know because uh, it is annoying to, you know, do it each time, but it only takes a couple seconds. So yeah. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Have you switched over to Resolve? Are you using this video as kind of, uh, you know, checking out if you want to switch? If so, let me know down below. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.